good morning everyone uh, so today on the fourth lecture of the learning basic arthroscopy program we have uh, eminent orthopedic surgeon dr david figuera of publicity from uh, chile he is the chief of knee and arthroscopy unit orthopedics department of clinica alimena and he is also professor of uh, titular faculty at the medicina clinica alimena he is past president of SLRD, that is Latin American Arthroscopy Society, and is also secretary of ISACOS. So he is going to give us his tips and knowledge regarding the evolution of uh, the principles of ACL reconstruction, with specific reference to change over from transtibial to patient-specific arthroscopic reconstruction. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation, sir. So you can share your screen now. Okay. Um, along with us, uh, sorry, along with us, we have Dr. Brian. He is a consultant arthroscopy surgeon from Singapore. Uh, previously, he was employed in NUH and he is now at Orthosports Hospital. And we also have uh, Dr. Srinivas. He is consultant arthroscopy surgeon from South India, and myself, I am Dr. Sasindra, shoulder and knee arthroscopy surgeon from Apollo Hospital, Muscat. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, along with us, uh, sorry, along with us, we have Dr. Brian, he is the consultant arthroscopy surgeon from Singapore. You're online, sir. We can go ahead. You can go ahead? Yes, sir. We can go ahead. Okay. Good morning. And uh, in Chile, it's uh, 7 a.m. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm happy and, and honored to be here with you uh, and uh, invited to this important uh, conference uh, in, uh, in your country. Um, I, I, I work in uh, Clinica Alemana. This is some, uh, my disclosures. Uh, this is Clinic Alemana. Uh, uh, Clinic Alemana is uh, one of the biggest uh, private hospitals in, in, in Chile. Uh, we have 500 beds and uh, our group of orthopedic surgeons uh, um, uh, has um, almost 100 uh, surgeons, uh, not only knee. Uh, in the knee group, we are 11. And we perform uh, almost uh, 1,500 uh, surgeries in a year. Uh, we are going to talk about the ACL reconstruction, uh, some principles and some uh, specific issues. Uh, when you look at the ACL lesion, it's one of the most uh, frequent uh, orthopedic sport uh, injuries, especially uh, among uh, young uh, athletes uh, with a high incidence. And, uh, but however, failures rates can be up to 30% and return to sport uh, can take as long as 18 months. And um, development of osteoarthritis uh, following the reconstruction uh, continues to be an unsolved issue. So uh, it's not a solved uh, problem in, uh, in, in nowadays. And uh, many of these uh, factors are related to biology and muscle uh, imbalance uh, and deficit that can cause, cause uh, by the injury at the beginning of the of the lesion. Uh, however, there are still many factors that add, uh, especially influence uh, uh, the, the final result of an ACL reconstruction as uh, the graft selection, the tunnel position, the graft uh, fixation angle, the initial graft tension, uh, preservation or not uh, uh, of the remnants of the native tissue, and another concomitant ligament uh, menisci or cartilage lesions. So, the graft selection is one of the most critical and controversial question for surgeons at the moment of the surgery. Uh, in the last year, there have been many innovations in uh, the field of ACL reconstruction. 
Uh, one of them is a better understanding of the anatomy and biomechanics that's uh, promoted by uh, many anatomists and especially for uh, uh, our friend uh, uh, Freddy Fu, uh, changing the concept of the uh, femoral channels uh, and looking for the uh, anatomic footprint of the ACL at the moment of the reconstruction. Uh, so better positioning of the tunnels uh, now is a strategy for reducing uh, rotational instability and prevent the future uh, osteoarthritis. Uh, regarding these factors, there are uh, some factors that are uh, under the surgeon control as uh, the graft selection, the graft position, the fixation method and rehabilitation. In my own experience, uh, uh, we started in the uh, late uh, uh, 80s and uh, uh, in the 90s with the transtibial ACL reconstruction. And, uh, and then I moved uh, to the anatomic uh, positions uh, using a medial portal uh, approach uh, in, uh, in the in the current time, I use uh, an outside in technique that we're going to uh, look in detail uh, in, in the next uh, slides. Uh, if we take a, a small look to the history of ACL reconstruction, uh, this is not uh, new. In 1836, Weber uh, comes to uh, two functional bundles uh, and then uh, uh, an open method for a reconstruction of two bundles is described at the MOT. And uh, in 1999, Muneta uh, uh, start talking about the anatomical position of the uh, ACL. And uh, at the beginning of the 2000, uh, Gu and uh, his group uh, uh, start talking about the ACL single bundle that doesn't improve the rotational uh, stability uh, at all. So, uh, in the last year has been a drastic change from transtibial reconstruction to anatomic position, motivated especially for the lack of control of uh, the rotatory instability. Uh, and that uh, has changed the mind and the approach of the uh, knee surgeons. Uh, here you can see uh, some pictures that I uh, have taken through the years. Uh, in, uh, on the left of your screen, uh, you can check a uh, bilateral uh, bone, patellar tendon bone. Uh, at the same time, in a young uh, patient, this is a socket patient. Um, on the right, uh, at the top, you can see how I'm looking for the anatomic footprint through an anteromedial portal uh, in the femoral side. And uh, in the bottom, you can see my current technique uh, approach uh, that. Uh, comes to the anatomic uh, landmarks of the uh, footprint through an outside in technique. Uh, this uh, house uh, has been my evolution in terms of the, some x-rays uh, uh, with the transfix system uh, at the beginning. Uh, um, uh, of course, the transtibial reconstruction with the uh, two uh, screw interference screws. Uh, uh, you know, on the top and the right and the left, you can see the anatomic approach uh, that requires uh, to bend the knee more than 100 uh, degrees of flexion. And now the, uh, on the right, you can see the uh, outside intending. Uh, the question is, uh, why this change? Uh, that question can be answered in terms that the uh, tunnel placement is the most important factor for successful result. And that uh, has been demonstrated in many uh, papers. Uh, uh, I would like you can re re review this paper. Uh, that's uh, take uh, more than 100 revision ACL reconstruction. 88% had a non-anatomic graft uh, placement. And 61% of them of the graft were entirely on the intercondylar femoral roof. And the transceval technique was used in 83% of, the, of these uh, patients. And if you need more evidence, just uh, take a look at the uh, theology of uh, graft failure. Uh, this is not new. Uh, you can check that technical errors uh, are uh, the most frequent cause of uh, the graft failure. 
However, there are also many problems still unsolved by an anatomic position uh, with of ACL insertion that uh, has uh, a, a varies uh, between uh, some patients uh, from uh, 12 to 22 millimeters. Uh, the location uh, is not easy sometimes to precise. Uh, the anatomy in the, the tibia and femur also has some variations. Uh, the rotational stability not always is controlled uh, by the anatomic uh, reconstruction. Uh, the graph selection, uh, we'll take a look uh, in, uh, soon uh, at, at, at the, the amount of uh, in the graph choice. Uh, and the, the different uh, uh, gender, uh, age of the patient, function, uh, expectation uh, of the patient that they have to be uh, taken into account at the moment of the uh, reconstruction. If we look at the anatomical landmarks, uh, uh, where there is a, uh, we need a individualized ACL reconstruction. Uh, you uh, have the paper of Lubovitch, the Bernard and Freddy Fu, but uh, who is right? Uh, you can see different approach to uh, looking for the anatomical position. Uh, and this was born many years ago, uh, one new concept that they uh, talk about the individualized uh, ACL reconstruction. Uh, this has uh, four principles. To restore both functional bundles, the graph need to be placed anatomically. Uh, we have to tension each bundle in accordance with the native tensioning pattern. And finally, we have to customize uh, the surgery for each individual patient. Uh, then individualized ACL surgery allows for uh, customization of the surgery, accounting for uh, graph selection uh, for every patient according to their anatomy, lifestyle, activity, etc. And the surgeon also have to be comfortable with a variety of graph harvest and surgical techniques when we uh, assume that uh, kind of individualized uh, surgery. Uh, how to restore both functional bundles? There, there is, uh, if we analyze the literature, there is insufficient evidence to determine the relative effectiveness of uh, the double bundle and single bundle reconstruction for anterior cruciate ligament rupture in, in adults. Uh, we know that single bundle reconstruction restores only 70 to 79% of the footprint size. Uh, please check the study. It's a pro prospective randomized uh, clinical study uh, and the result, the anatomical one bundle is better than traditional one bundle to, through a trans portal. The anatomic, atomic, atomic, atomic uh, equal to anatomic two bundles. So uh, there, are, there are no many difference between both uh, techniques. Uh, and what's my approach for getting an anatomic ACL reconstruction? Uh, I talked before about the outside in technique. Uh, this uh, use this uh, retro drill system. Uh, this system uh, consists of a femoral channel placement from outside to inside. There is no posterior wall blowout, uh, a clear visual field, and no screw divergence. Uh, you can perform an easy revision of ACL reconstruction and produce a longer tunnel uh, length. And how uh, we uh, do it? Uh, in this video, I uh, use a pin guide that enter in an angle of 60 degrees uh, from a line perpendicular to the femoral uh, axis and 20 degrees from the trans epicondylar axis. Uh, that's the inclination angles. Then you find the anatomic footprint. I, I usually use the Lubovitch uh, system that uh, then insert uh, the rotary guide. This has an, uh, an sleeve uh, of uh, seven millimeters step off the tip that the, you can impact over the uh, cortical protecting uh, the cortical bone. Uh, once you penetrated the joint, uh, you can flip the tip and perform the retrograde grill with the same guide uh, sometimes it's not easy to take it off this uh, 
tool. And uh, that is, is an impact of the sleeve uh, over the cortical, seven millimeters. And then uh, we perform the retrograde drill. That's create a femoral socket. Uh, and then through uh, this uh, femoral socket, we uh, uh, pass a fiber stick suture that is loaded into the cannula and retrieved uh, through the middle portal. Uh, the tibial tunnel is uh, performing the, in, in, with a normal guide in the anatomic footprint. Uh, and then uh, uh, we pass uh, this fiber stick uh, through the um, tibial tunnel and pass the graph uh, with a suspensory cortical graph uh, fixation uh, in this uh, case. That's easy. Well, the main advantages of this technique is uh, that you perform the tunnels in 90 degrees. You can do both tunnels independently. Uh, we usually uh, obtain a larger socket, uh, femoral socket. It allows uh, measurement of the femoral interosseous distance before uh, socket uh, creation. And when uh, we have to perform two bundles, uh, I, I uh, usually don't do uh, a double bundle. Um, the recommendation of Freddy Fu is uh, when the tibial insertion size is more than 14 millimeters or the intercondylar notch is more than 14 millimeters uh, in absence of other ligament injuries uh, and osteoarthritis uh, changes and uh, maybe also uh, in patients with uh, close physis. And which one is the best? Well, uh, According to the trans technique, uh, there are many uh, 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 surgeons that are very familiar with the technique and has proven long-term uh, outcomes, but uh, produce non-anatomic tunnel and uh, comes the rotational instability. Uh, through the anterior medial portal, it produces an uncontrained anatomic tunnel, uh, but the techniques is, uh, is challenged. Sometimes there is a short socket uh, or a posterior wall blow out. And with the outside technique, uh, produce an uncontrained anatomic tunnel. It can be all epiphys epiphyseal, and uh, sometimes we, you need first copy for all epiphyseal in, in some cases. So uh, uh, all techniques has uh, pros and cons. Uh, I'd like to show you a survey performed between Magellan Group members in different regions of, of the world. Uh, published by the group of uh, my friend, uh, Ryosuke uh, Kuroda from uh, COP Japan. Uh, uh, those are the survey responded by region of, of, of origin from uh, North America, Europe, uh, Asia, and some from uh, South America also. Uh, as you can see, most of the surgeons nowadays are, are using the AM uh, portal looking for an anatomic femoral footprint. And uh, the trans tibial technique only is uh, performed in 8% of uh, the surgeons. Uh, the other saying, the, the technique that I use is, is perform only in 18% of, of uh, the colleagues. And uh, also most of them are using the single bundle technique. Uh, as you can see, only 3% of the surgeons are using double bundle. And now uh, we will take a look to the graph. Uh, the graph has to be uh, in the native footprint uh, we have uh, some anatomic landmarks for uh, doing that, uh, the lateral intercondyle ridge and uh, bi bifurcate ridge. Uh, there are many options, so we are taking a look to this option and the graph uh, healing. Many options for ACL. And uh, which graph to use? Well, it depends uh, because uh, there are different sports, different patients, different problems. Uh, several factors has to be addressed to facilitate uh, that uh, informed choice, uh, graph failure, the rate of return to level of activity prior to injury, the donor site morbidity, the risk of uh, osteoarthritis, the surgical time, the cost, uh, and associated complication. And also we have to take into account the surgeon's familiarity with the, with the graph to make this critical decision. There are some uh, surgeons that prefer bone, patellar tendon bone, and they are not uh, prone to change to another kind of uh, a graft. And the ideal graft doesn't exist because 
must reproduce structural properties of the normal ACL has to be a uh, minimum morbidity, uh, has to be available, uh, cost effective, uh, non immunogenic reaction, strong fixation at the beginning, length and adequate diameter filling, and uh, has to allow for early and intensive rehabilitation. So we can be close to an idea graph, but uh, probably uh, as, uh, as I show you now, uh, that doesn't exist. And the mechanical resistance of the graph should be compared with the resistance offered by the ACL during activities of the daily life, living, rehabilitation and sports activities. If we compare uh, different graph options, all graphs have higher strength and stiffness than native ACL. And currently, uh, we can categorize the, this graph in, uh, in three types, autograph, hamstring, bone, patellar tendon bone, especially in quadriceps, allograph, and synthetics. Uh, this is the survey uh, in, in, in the Magellan group. And uh, it, as you can see, most of the surgeon uh, has uh, the hamstring uh, tendon as the first choice following by the bone patellar tendon bone in almost 70% of the patients. Uh, and that's going to change in ACL revision surgery where the most uh, used uh, graph is the bone patellar tendon, the bone, patellar tendon bone uh, and then hamstring and appears uh, allograph as uh, one of the source of uh, a graft. So graph selection should be uh, also individualized as it can be affected by factors such as gender, age, patient's activity, pre-op exams, previous surgeries, patient expectations, and other needs and demands such uh, as employment. Uh, multiple factors can influence your graph selection. Uh, if we look at the reported rate of graph failure, uh, there are lower revision rate with uh, autograph when we compare with the uh, synthetic or allograph. Uh, among autograph, hamstring tendon seems to be highly revision that uh, bone patellar tendon bone, uh, uh, although results are uh, still controversial. According to age, in young patients, active patient uh, use uh, of allograph should be avoided because uh, uh, has been reported more high revision rate with the, that uh, kind of uh, graft. Um, a use of a, a bone patellar tendon bone might also have to be avoided in elderly patients because uh, poor muscle strength. According to the patient activity uh, level and type of activity, in active patient, patients, use of allograft should be avoided as it has been reported to have a higher revision rate than a uh, autograph. And in patients with uh, contact sports, the use of patellar tendon bone could be uh, uh, recommended because of high strength and stiffness and faster graft incorporation with solid fixation. And uh, also take a look at the complications. Uh, in patients uh, with strict requirements for kneeling and females with the low activity level, the use of patellar tendon bone should be avoided uh, to reduce the risk of anterior knee pain and kneeling pain. And also in patients with uh, uh, osteoarthritis, the use of bone patellar tendon bone may also have to be avoided as uh, this uh, uh, graph has a higher risk of osteoarthritis. And finally, in patients with high risk of uh, infection, don't use hamstring tendon because uh, they have a higher rate of infection uh, uh, reported. So many factors. And uh, just uh, take a look at a brief summary of pros and cons of uh, different graphs. If we look at the bone patellar tendon bone, uh, it uh, probably is one of the uh, most used uh, graph uh, uh, currently. Um, most likely quite healing. It has an excellent fixation at the beginning. Uh, there are good track record and strength of, of, of the graph is one of the uh, um, is, uh, power for, for, uh, for using it. Uh, but uh, some cons uh, are referred especially to uh, patellofemoral pain, uh, degenerative disease or osteoarthritis uh, in the future, the risk of patellar uh, fracture or uh, tendon rupture or tendinitis or more painful surgery. And uh, there is a high 
association between patellar tendon bone with extensor uh, morbidity. Uh, regarding quadriceps tendons, uh, it's very similar, it has a very similar tensile strength uh, to BTB. Uh, the fixation is similar also, but has less anterior knee pain. The cons is that the needs a uh, longer incision. There, are, there, are, there is uh, less experience with that tendon and is more used in a, a, a revision surgery than in a, a primary surgery. Uh, regarding hamstrings, uh, semi-T and gracilis, they have a stronger tensile strength and uh, with smaller incision uh, can be used in pediatric patients uh, and uh, there is uh, some time that they uh, report a regrowth of the tendons controlled by uh, ultrasound or MRI. Um, but uh, on, in the positive, the, the fixation strength is not uh, as uh, in, in BTB. Uh, there, are, there is a residual muscle weakness in uh, some patients, especially in hamstring. Um, the, uh, there is uh, an issue regarding the soft tissue uh, to bone healing. Uh, the harvest, uh, uh, sometimes uh, we don't have a control of the size and diameter of the, uh, uh, of the graft. Uh, regarding this issue, the, the graft diameter, look at the, the, the paper that we published in the Air Force Open Review. Uh, uh, the exact diameter need to uh, uh, avoid failures is not absolutely. Uh, some, some, some says that there is uh, uh, over eight millimeter, uh, probably with uh, over, over eight millimeter, I, I'll be happy to uh, do uh, a reconstruction, but uh, it's not absolutely. But increases of uh, 0.5 millimeter uh, up to 10 are always beneficial for the patient. So try, don't do a graph uh, diameter, uh, uh, less than uh, eight millimeters. Over the 10, nobody knows what happened and there is no evidence. When we compare BTV versus hamstring, uh, there are no studies that uh, today that demonstrate a superiority of any graph source uh, uh, according to stability and functional outcomes. There are many studies, especially uh, some uh, meta-analysis. Uh, another studies address that uh, stability is, uh, is more predictable uh, uh, in BTB than in, in uh, Hampton. But uh, when you look at the, at the general results, there are uh, just a few uh, difference. And when we compare the BTB with quad uh, tendon, uh, the results are very uh, similar. And uh, regarding allograph, allograph is a, is a, uh, a, a nice resource of a, a graph and uh, has uh, many theoretical advantages uh, over allograph, uh, over uh, uh, autograph, including uh, lack of donor morbidity, less uh, post-op pain, uh, less surgical time, uh, possibility of carving the graph to measure, uh, so customize uh, the graph, and avoid loss of tissue uh, by uh, the patient. Uh, there are many different allograph uh, available, BTB, quad, uh, Achilles tendon, hamstring. Uh, the, more, uh, the, the more use are uh, TBL is anterior and posterior and um, Achilles tendon in, uh, in uh, ACL reconstruction. Uh, but uh, what are the limitation of uh, this uh, graft? Uh, Difficulties uh, using a graph uh, are availability, uh, this is uh, transmission risk, the cost, uh, and uh, there are some issues regarding the uh, biomechanic. Uh, many studies uh, have shown a slower incorporation uh, and a lower mechanical resistance, and uh, uh, another have shown an immune response that is different in, in uh, to uh, autograph. But uh, results for allograph, uh, in general, there are uh, just a small difference with uh, when we compare with uh, autograph. Uh, 
um, some uh, um, uh, surgeons have uh, demonstrated more failures uh, uh, in revision with the allograph, especially in those uh, uh, irradiated graph and um, um, uh, has uh, more revision and more instability uh, in this uh, group. And uh, how is the return to plane? Uh, well, it's better in bone patellar tendon bone, uh, but it's finally associated to many uh, factors uh, that not only depend on the graft as a uh, as time of graduation, uh, time of season, uh, uh, family, work demands, etc. So uh, it's not only the graph, uh, uh, the, the issue in this. Uh... And uh, in summary, regarding the graph selection, this must be individualized and surgeon must be familiar with each type of graph available uh, to offer the best graph selection for each patient. Uh, graph failure rate should be only part of the broader conversation with uh, each patient. All factors such, such as uh, sex, age, activity level, type of activity, uh, complication, and other needs uh, and demands of patients should be considered. And more evidence needs to be accumulated to select uh, the best graph. There is no recommendation for what is the best uh, graph at that time. And the other question is, is there any ideal fixation? Uh, we know that BTV graph heal by bone to bone healing uh, very fast. Uh, and uh, soft tissue graph uh, are incorporated by sharp fiber uh, a double of time, uh, 12 weeks. Uh, we know that allograph take longer. So till that time, fixation device uh, should secure the graph. And uh, from a biomechanical point of view, the reconstructed ACL is subject to uh, forces by activities of the daily living, living and rehabilitation. Within the first six weeks, the graph is subjected to a high load in cycles. Uh, and the ultimate load to failure is about 3,000 newton for BTP and 4,000 newton for 70 gracilis. This far exceeds the usual forces uh, of the daily living activities and rehabilitation. So fixation is the weakest link in the early post-op period. And we have to look at that uh, fixation. There are uh, many issues with uh, uh, fixation. And one of them is the motion uh, inside the tunnels. Uh, more than three millimeters motion in interference with graph incorporation and may cause uh, tunnel widening. Finally, tunnel widening is not only a mechanical, but also a biological problem, but uh, uh, it can be produced for some type of fixation. Just some definition about biomechanics fixation. The strength is the ultimate load to failure. Stiffness is the resistance to displacement ardent load. The slippage of the graph is the change in initial position under a specific number of submaximal cycles. So the ideal fixation has to be strong enough to avoid failure, stiff enough to restore instability, and secure enough to avoid slippage. Must be anatomic, biocompatible, safe, MRI compatible, and allow easy revision. In general, Type of fixation are defined by upper tube fixation and suspensory fixation. Uh, probably upper tube fixation is the most used uh, interference screws. And uh, nowadays we have the possibility to have the, this, that the suspensory fixation, especially uh, cortical buttons uh, that are uh, very useful for uh, fixation in, uh, when we use hamstrings. Uh, there are many advantages of apertures. Uh, uh, minimize the graft tunnel motion, uh, less femoral canal widening, creep is less. Uh, and there are many factors that influence that uh, fixation. The geometry of the uh, screw, the length, the divergence, the torque, the, um, uh, the bone uh, morphology, uh, especially the bone density uh, and the screw material. Uh, there are different materials for that kind of uh, screws. 
Uh, I use this uh, sus suspensory cortical fixation of second generation that allows full length filling of the, the graft part of the femoral tunnel, uh, filling the complete socket. So uh, that's the main advantage of this uh, generation uh, of uh, fixation. You can see as uh, the tunnel displays uh, in the socket and goes uh, far enough to permit uh, a close, uh, neat uh, uh, position uh, inside the tunnel. Uh, probably tibial fixation is the weakest uh, uh, in terms of uh, less secure uh, bond density, the angle of uh, position, uh, and, um, and another uh, issues. In conclusion about fixation, in the early post-op uh, uh, period, fixation is the weakest leak. Tibial fixation is a, is a greater risk of failure. Clinical results of uh, a lot of methods are very comparable. Uh, tunnel widen widening still is a concern. Aperture fixation theoretically are better. Interference screws uh, are uh, usually the gold standard. Tunnel dilation improves fixation, especially in tibia, and consider sometimes hybrid fixation that is becoming uh, more popular. When we look at the survey again, uh, uh, many surgeons uh, prefer the cortical fixation, that's a suspensory cortical system, and then the interference screw fixation. Finally, the choice of fixation may depend on the surgeon's comfort level, but it's very important in the final result. We should avoid the errors that you can see in these pictures performed by experts knee surgeons. Graft tensioning is another issue. Uh, avoid excessive tension at the moment of fixation. Uh, when tension in two bundles, they, they have to be tensioned in different knee position. The standard is uh, between 20 or 30 degrees. And there, is, uh, 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 there are some surgeons that prefer to uh, fix the uh, ACL in uh, full extension, uh, but uh, also with uh, no more than 20 to 40 Newtons. Uh, excessive initial tension of the ACL may potentially bring the deleterious effect, especially in the articular surface leading to cartilage uh, problems. And finally, customize the surgery for each individual patient according to the activity, according to gender, to age, to sports that they, pass, they, they practice. We are not uh, all uh, the same. In conclusion, ACL is a changing paradigm in ACL, uh, in, in ACL. There is a changing paradigm in ACL reconstruction. There are different patients. There are different surgery. There are different approach, different graph, different fixation. In the future, customize surgeries for each, each patient. Probably that will be our future. Thank you so much for this, uh, for your attention. Thanks a lot, Dr. Figueroa. That was a very clear and uh, extensive presentation. Um, I'm sure it would have cleared a lot of uh, doubts in the minds of the young arthroscopy surgeon. Uh, Dr. Brian and Dr. Srinivas, do you have something to ask? Dr. Brian, do you have uh, anything to ask, uh, sir? Yeah, actually, um, Dr. Figueroa, thank you for your talk. It's very, very clear, very informative. Um, I, I saw with quite a lot of interest, you had that first, uh, one of the first slides where you had a patient with bilateral uh, ACL reconstructions. Um, is, is that something that you do quite uh, commonly and does it affect uh, the patients in terms of rehabilitation and return to sports? So, so the, your question is, uh is regarding the rehabilitation and return to sport? In the bilateral, bilateral ACL reconstruction. Ah, yeah. Yeah. yeah thank, you for, thank you for the question. Uh, I mean, bilateral surgeries, not only ACL surgery, 
uh, are a special issue. Um, uh, I, I always promote the immediate knee uh, full extension, uh, partial weight bearing with two crutches in those patients, uh, depending uh, obviously in uh, the possibility to have another lesion. So it, it's not uh, common that we perform an ACL reconstruction uh, as a single procedure. We usually do also a meniscal uh, suture or a cartilage lesion. Uh, so in that patient, uh, especially uh, I avoid uh, uh, and prefer a, a partial weight bearing with two crutches for uh, more than one month, uh, pro probably between four and six weeks. Um, I, I mean, uh, the bilateral surgery is, is an special issue, not only in ACL reconstruction, but uh, also in another kind of surgeries. I mean, patellofemoral uh, lesions, uh, uh, total knee replacement, bilateral, uh, and um, uh, uh, probably rehabilitation uh, has to be uh, as slow as uh, as we usually prefer in those patients. Um, we have to consider also uh, that the, those patients are going to consume uh, more analgesic, more uh, anti-inflammatory drugs, and uh, uh, need uh, uh, a better control of pain uh, in the post-op. Uh, so it's not easy to start a, a fast rehabilitation as, uh, as, as we should in some patient. And uh, regarding the return to sports, uh, um, in my experience, uh, bilateral surgery in young, especially in those uh, young and uh, chosen patients uh, is not a problem. Uh, and uh, it's not different than uh, a normal ACL, single ACL in just one knee. Uh, uh, and it uh, comes uh, to be between uh, eight and 10 uh, months after the surgery. Um, you know, when, when, when we'll, uh, that's an issue very interesting and, and I don't know how, to, how you do it, but uh, uh, when we look at, the, at, at these surveys, uh, you know that uh, most of the surgeons allows uh, uh, a return to sport in an average of eight uh, months. Uh, but some, 80% uh, of them uh, uh, allows the, uh, that patient uh, come back to sport or return to sport at six months. I, I, and I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not totally agree with that uh, terms because I think six months is, uh, is just, uh, uh, the patient is just starting the rehabilitation and, and the, the it's, it's, it's so aggressive to me, uh, uh, the return to sport at six months. I, I, I would prefer a patient uh, uh, more time in rehabilitation, especially in uh, uh, doing some exercises related to the sport that they practice. Uh, they, that's uh, what we call the functional rehabilitation. Um, and uh, I usually takes uh, between eight and 10 months uh, before the return to, to sports. I, I don't know, what, what's your experience yeah. in that? For bilateral ACLs or? No, no, uh, for return to sports. Return to sport, yeah. So but I'm even more conservative actually, usually 10 or 12 months for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if, if you don't mind, I've got another question. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually seeing a patient right now. He's got bilateral uh, ACL uh, ruptures and in one of the knees, he's got a PCL rupture as well. So there were, he was asking me two things, right? The first is, can we do both knees at the same time? Uh, I think you've already answered that question. Uh, the other question is for the knee with the PCL rupture as well. What is your take on it? Do we do, we do a, a multi-ligamentous uh, recon or uh, what, what are your views? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, there's a, there has been a, a, a a, a change of the paradigm of uh, uh, reconstruct uh, 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 multi-ligament injuries. Uh, in uh, former times, uh, many years ago, uh, we used to do one first and the other ligaments first uh, uh, after. I mean, um, in those patients that have a, a, a central pivot uh, problem with ACL and PCL lesions, uh, we used to perform the uh, extra articular uh, reconstruction first. And then three or four or six months after, 
we did uh, ACL and PCL at the same time. Uh, first uh, of all, you have to consider that a patient that, that have an ACL and PCL lesion uh, probably also have a, a, a posterolateral corner lesion or a, a posterior medial lesion. So uh, it's a real multi-ligament and, uh, and, and uh, it's, it's, a, it's a real multi-ligament instability. Uh, uh, nowadays, we are more prone, I'm more prone to reconstruct both, uh, both uh, uh, ligaments at the same time. Um, and and um, if we have a multi-ligament lesion, I mean, a posterior lateral corner with uh, ACL or posterior lateral corner with ACL and PCL. So uh, uh, conceptually uh, or theoretically a uh, uh, ligament uh, uh, or uh, dislocated knee. Uh, in young patient with no comorbidities, with no other lesions, we try to do uh, all at the same time. Yeah, this is a, I mean, it's a kind of a new fashion. Uh, there are many papers that show uh, no uh, different results uh, when you compare with the two stage uh, or sometimes uh, three stages uh, reconstruction. And uh, you have to be, um, uh, uh, you have to be, uh, and, uh, and you have to avoid uh, the tunnel uh, uh, confluence. Uh, and uh, well, there are many uh, probably technical uh, issues that we have to take in account uh, when we are going to do uh, multi-ligament at the same time. So in this patient that I'm talking about, he does uh, <clears throat> Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So he's, he's, he spends a lot of time on his knees. Uh, uh, would you then, what, what would your choice of graphs be for such a patient then? Well, we, for, fortunately, we, we have the possibility to use uh, allograft. Uh, in, that, in those uh, multi-ligament injuries, I never use autograft, yeah? I never cause more morbidity uh, taking uh, a hamstring or BTV or a quad. Uh, I know many countries don't don't are, uh, don't don't uh, have the possibility to use allograft, but uh, I don't know how do they how do they do it because uh, uh, otherwise it's, it's it's very hard to face that problem. I mean, uh, I just try to to imagine. Uh, a patient with the ACL, PCL, uh, posterior coronary, we have to reconstruct the many ligaments at the same time, uh, especially if we use the anatomic reconstruction uh, of LAPAT, for example. And uh, I don't know, I, 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 I don't know how, how do you face that uh, kind of patient if you don't have uh, allograph uh, available. Uh, fortunately, we have, so uh, I use a lot of allograph in those cases. I use allograph in revision, and in multi-ligament injuries, but not in primary uh, ACL reconstruction. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Figueroa. No, you're welcome. Okay, um, I have a couple of questions. So I saw in some of your images, there is a post fixation mm -hmm. in the tibia. Uh, what is your opinion about the uh, need for a post fixation in the tibia after using a uh, interference screw? Um, well, uh, you know, it's very common. Uh, it's, it's, it's very common to use uh, a double fixation at the tibia. I usually use uh, a screw. Uh, uh, I used to use uh, bioabsorbable screws, but they have a lot of problems. Tunnel widening, tunnel, uh, tunnel reaction. There is an uh, inflammatory reaction uh, it's very frequent, especially when um, when the screw is going to degrade. Uh, they they have pain, they have swelling, they have a, a widening of the tunnel. So I um, stopped using that bioabsorber screw, and now I'm using uh, an interference screw, but peak uh, polyether uh, et Well, I, I don't remember exactly, but but it's peak. Uh, uh, so it's, uh, it's a kind of plastic uh, um, um, polyether ether ketanol, yeah? And uh, it's very strong. It's very strong, 
is uh, it doesn't uh, is doesn't break as uh, by observer screw. Uh, it, it fulfill the complete uh, tunnel in the tibia and uh, and sometimes, especially in young women, uh, I use uh, two system, this screw, and uh, I, I also uh, add a staple, a staple, yeah, but not a post. Uh, I've never used a post. Uh, I use a staple uh, in uh, as a second uh, fixation. Okay. Um, is there any uh, specific, uh, I mean, purpose why you prefer it for young women? Excuse me. No, I didn't understand. Is there, is there any specific reason why you prefer to have a staple along in a young woman? Oh, yeah. Pre ACUV construction. Uh, yes, uh, you know, uh, tibia uh, probably is the weakest uh, part of the uh, of the fixation. I mean, it's, uh, um, I I prefer in 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 those uh, women uh, who has uh, a, a bone uh, a, a morphology, morphology density uh, less strong. Uh, I prefer to supplementary fixation with the, the staples. I mean, uh, 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 it's better. There are some uh, 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 biomechanical studies that uh, have demonstrated uh, uh, that you increase the resistance of the fixation when you use a staple secondary in that, uh, in that uh, especially in that uh, girls. So thank you, Dr. Figuera. That was a very clear and crisp uh, talk. I have a couple of questions. Um, when do you prefer to do um, ACL reconstruction uh, normally in half, after the injury? Um, and uh, do you have any different criteria for sportsmen and uh, um, uh, active patients, but not uh, active in sports? Um. I, I mean, uh, if I understand completely, your question is uh, regarding the the the, the, the timing uh, for surgery for surgery. I mean, yes. yeah. Uh, when we when we look uh, yes. at, at that issue, uh, we have to consider uh, many factors. Uh, first, of the patient. I mean, uh, preoperative ROM range of motion. Uh, swelling, uh, quadriceps strength. I don't do uh, ACL reconstruction uh, in a patient that uh, has a lot of swelling, less than 90 degrees of flexion, and uh, a, a very, very weak uh, quadriceps, uh, quadriceps muscle. Uh, I prefer to delay the ACL surgery and uh, you have to consider that when you delay the surgery, uh, probably you increase the possibility of cartilage lesions and meniscal lesion, but uh, uh, that is true if you delay more than uh, five months. Uh, that has been, uh, that, that was the evidence-based uh, medicine says. So um, from injury to the surgery, uh, I uh, I consider that that the uh, three factors, I mean pre op ROM range of motion, swelling and uh, quad uh, strength. Uh, if uh, we have a patient uh, at the at the first week after the lesion, with uh, more than ninety degrees, with uh, good uh, quad strength uh, and. Um, Without uh, many swelling, I do the surgery immediately. I don't wait uh, for more for more time. I mean, uh, uh, that's uh, most of patients that we uh, face are young patients, are athletes. Uh, they are uh, uh, recreative uh, uh, sports. Uh, they are not competitive or professional, but uh, they want to return to sport as soon as possible. Do you think athletes get the surgery earlier than uh, general population? Uh, yes, I, I, I have that impression. 
that uh, uh, athletes uh, demand for faster surgery, for faster, faster uh, rehabilitation, and for faster return to sports. Yeah, they are a special group uh, of patients. And uh, one more uh, question, what are your views on uh, all inside ACL reconstruction and uh, do you do notchplasty at all? In, in ACL yeah. it's a, yeah. That's a, a good question. I mean, uh, I don't do notch plasty. I mean, uh, uh, I, I, uh, if I look uh, to my back, to my uh, past, uh, when I did uh, the notch plasty, it's because I wanted to see better the footprint. Yeah. Uh, I, I was. Uh, um, uh, probably confused with some landmarks, anatomic landmarks, and I, I needed to, to, to see better. And uh, probably that's the main reason why surgeons do the notch plastic is because they don't see, uh, a, 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 they don't see well the landmarks, the, the, bony, the, the bone landmarks. And, uh, and regarding the, the, the other question was... Um, All inside ACL reconstruction. Yeah, the all inside. Yeah, uh, well, it's a it's a technique that I like uh, that, that I like especially. Uh, I, I don't know what happened in India and your countries, but uh, uh, in Chile, uh, we usually get uh, a hamstring tendon uh, very thin, uh, and uh, uh, we we try to uh, improve the diameter and the size, uh, especially the diameter. Uh, doing a quadruple or a, 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 or a, 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 or a quintuple or sextuple uh, a graft, and uh, but that short uh, short the, the graft, and uh, sometimes we get a, a graft a nine millimeters diameter, but uh, only eight uh, centimeters long length. So. In that case, uh, I try to use the uh, all inside technique. And uh, also I, I do uh, all inside technique in um, that uh, patients uh, uh, with the uh, open physis. Um, in, in those patients, I, I prefer that technique all inside. And I use uh, uh, a cortical uh, suspensory uh, fixation in the tibia and in the femur. Use of nurse. Nurse, yeah, uh, I mm -hmm. think that's a very important point that you said uh, that uh, when the graft is very short, then all inside helps. There are some times when uh, in order to achieve a thick graft, I have even used a 60 mm graft. It is quite good. And nowadays there is more evidence that states that the healing happens at the aperture. So it's not exactly important to have a long graft inside the tunnel. So I think that's a very important point that all inside can be used for uh, relatively short graphs. And uh, again, for children where you don't want to damage the physis. Again, I agree with that. Thank you for pointing it out. But Srinivas, uh, you have something? I was asking about the augments for ACL. The augment, augmentation? Well, uh, you you can you can uh, you can come you can take uh, the augmentation as uh, as uh, as uh, in different points. I mean, uh, when uh, I have a partial ACL rupture, yeah, that is, uh, it's not easy to define what is a partial uh, lesion. I mean, uh, there is there is no consensus in the on the definition of uh, uh, what is a partial lesion. Uh, of course, if uh, there is a anterior medial uh, uh, bundle lesion or a posterior lateral lesion, uh, you can uh, do an augmentation of the the uh, the turn uh, bundle. That's what we call augmentation. Yeah. Uh, uh, but there is uh, another point uh, uh, with augmentation that uh, is uh, regarding when uh, when you have a small uh, diameter uh, graph and, um, and, and, and when you don't uh, have uh, the possibility to take uh, another graph from the patient. I call augmentation 
in those cases to uh, an hybrid uh, technique. So uh, at the graph of the patient, I, uh, I add a allograph, an allograph. Uh, that's uh, common, especially in, uh, um, in, uh, in young uh, ladies. Uh, with the small size and uh, uh, so uh, we have different augmentation. I, I don't know what's uh, what what kind of augmentation do you refer? Uh, that case and uh, where I use an hybrid uh, technique. I mean allograph and autograph at the same time, uh, or that case is when we have a partial knee uh, uh, ACL rupture and uh, we augment we um, augment uh, with the uh, reconstruction of only one bundle. I mean, okay. Uh, we have a couple of questions from the audience. Uh, there's a question: How much time do you want to wait after a knee dislocation before you can do ligament reconstruction surgery? Uh, well, the, the the time of uh, reconstruction for. Uh, for a multi-ligament uh, lesion, uh, it depends on, on many uh, factors. I mean, uh, uh, feature of the patient, uh, uh, feature of the lesions, uh, uh, the kind of combination. Uh, um, sometimes in multi-ligament uh, injuries, uh, because uh, uh, the the skin and the soft tissues uh, are so uh, inflamed, we wait. Uh, uh, we, we use a uh, external fixator first, and 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 then um, we delay the surgery for uh, three or four weeks, or sometimes we just uh, do reconstruction. You know, uh, we have many issues to take in account in those cases. Uh, um, I mean, uh, uh, what are we going to do? Uh, a, a, re a repair or a reconstruction first? Second, what is the best time for doing that repair or reconstruction? Uh, before the third week or after the third week, uh, but uh, finally it depends on uh, on the patient, uh, edema, swelling, soft tissues, lesions, and uh, um, and finally uh, those patients uh, have to consider that the, many of those patients are uh, not only have the lesions uh, on the, on their knees, uh, they are uh, uh, multi lesion uh, in, in, or multi fractures patients, so. It's not an easy answer. Huh? I mean, uh, has uh, you have to delay to, to deal with many factors uh, at that time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, the take-home message is something like: uh, make the knee rest again. Make sure the uh, muscle strength is good and good amount of range of motion is there. Until then, you can stabilize the knee, make the knee cool down, and then proceed with the reconstruction. Yes. Excuse me, no, okay. I, I didn't, uh, because I, uh, I, I, I hear uh, some cuts of <laughs> Okay, I'm sorry. Um, we have a couple of more questions. One particular surgeon says he uses a lot of peroneus longus for ACL reconstruction. What is your opinion about peroneus longus as graft donor graft option? Yeah. Uh, the, well, there are many, many biomechanical studies that uh, compare uh, different uh, allograft sources for uh, ACL reconstruction. Uh, I mean, there, there are no difference between uh, tibialis, yeah, anterior tibialis, posterior tibialis, and peroneus longus. I mean, uh, peroneus longus has uh, only one, one anatomical uh, different uh, point that um, at the uh, one of the uh, at the end of the uh, graph you usually find a uh, a kind of uh, um, um, be, a very thick uh, uh, tendon and um, i mean it's part of the anatomic uh, of, of that uh, that uh, graph uh, you have to consider when you uh, double or triple that tendon uh, because uh, sometimes uh, it's very thick and uh, in in one of the the the, the ends of the, of the tendon. But uh, 
uh, I have used the also peroneus longus tendon, especially in revisions also. Okay. Um, there is one question. Um, a surgeon is asking, uh, what is the size of the tunnel for a particular graph diameter that you drill? Yeah, that's a, that's a very uh, good question. Uh, uh, because uh, uh, sometimes used to, to used to perform a, a press fit graph. So uh, the uh, if the graph is uh, nine millimeters, they try to use a, a eight millimeter a tunnel. So the graph is uh, is uh, is very press fit inside the tunnel, especially those. Um, um, uh, soft tissues uh, or hamstring tendon. Um, uh, I try to use the same uh, tunnel diameter. If I use, uh, if I have a nine millimeter uh, diameter tendon graft, I uh, use a nine millimeter tendon, uh, tunnel on the femur and nine millimeter tunnel on the tibia. The difference is that I try to uh, uh, use uh, dilation uh, system, so impact the uh, um, the cancerous bone uh, before to uh, pass the graft. And um, probably uh, most than uh, the diameter that you use in the tunnel, that uh, usually can be the same or one millimeter less, uh, is the uh, fixation that you are going to use. In, uh, that, in those cases, I use one millimeter more or two millimeter more diameter uh, screw for fixation. Okay. Do you also use interference screw for the femur or you use suspensory for the femur? Uh, uh, currently, uh, I'm using only suspensory cortical fixation. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I prefer the system that fill the uh, tunnel completely with the with the with the graft. And uh, in, on the TV, I use a, a screw, interference screw. There's another question from the audience: How to tide over one has a thin graft or a smaller graft? How do I do? Excuse me. Um, if you land, if you land up in a thin graft, how do you manage it? You have a small graft. Uh, well, uh, we have a beautiful paper on on, on how to. Uh, I, I I told you before how you uh, double or triple or quadruple or quintuple or sextuple. A graph, uh, but you maintain uh, a length at least seven uh, centimeters. Yeah, uh, you can increase the, the diameter, uh, uh, um, increasing the loops that you do with the graft, uh, but uh, never less than seven centimeter length because uh, if you uh, has uh, less than that, you, you can perform an all inside technique. Um, and in, so, in some cases, uh, I have the possibility to add uh, a, an allograph also. So uh, in those cases, uh, uh, in some cases, I, I, I use uh, uh, both uh, autograph from the patient and allograph and, and uh, looking for a better diameter. Yeah. What is the smallest okay. diameter graft you have used? Excuse me. What? What is the smallest diameter graft you have used? Oh well, and uh, it depends because uh, it depends on uh, on the patient. Because uh, uh, if you have a uh, uh, eleven years old uh, patient, uh, uh, a girl, uh, uh, probably uh, you have to use a seven millimeter diameter a graft. It's it's not a sin, yeah, to use that. 
but uh, if you have a rugby player uh, or soccer player patience at uh, uh, one, one meter and uh, uh, or, or almost two meter tall, uh, probably uh, I would consider use a, a graph uh, 10 millimeters or 11 millimeters, uh, yeah? Um, and, 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 and of course, in a, in a young patient, in a small patient, uh, I, I wouldn't use a, a 10 millimeters uh, diameter graft uh, because uh, otherwise you can cause impeachment uh, and uh, a notch impeachment and probably you will have a, a, a problems, uh, a, a, a major problem that uh, than, uh, than the, if you use a, a, a less diameter. Uh, I mean, it depends on the, on, on the patient's age. It depends on the patient's tall size, uh, uh, but uh, between seven and 10, the, 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 probably with an average of uh, uh, nine uh, millimeter diameters. Hmm? Okay. Um, Dr. Vikira, uh, what are the incidents of anterior knee pain in your patients when you harvest patellar tendon graft? And do you have any yeah. tricks to reduce the anterior knee pain? Yeah, that's a very, very good question because uh, um, we, did a, we did a paper in, um, uh, regarding our uh, ACL reconstruction with bone patellar tendon bone. And we had an incidence of 26% of anterior knee pain uh, that uh, uh, even uh, uh, after two years of the ACL reconstruction, patients uh, had uh, this kind of pain, especially when they kneeling. And um, how to avoid that? It's not easy, you know, uh, because uh, we we usually take all the measures. We uh, we feel the defect of the knee. Uh, uh, when, when we when we take the bone plaque from the patella, uh, we feel the defect with the, all the graft that the, uh, we, we left. And sometimes we take graft from the TV also to feel the defect on the patella. But we also have uh, many patients with knee, anterior knee pain, yeah? Uh, but if you look at the patients that you have reconstructed with uh, hamstrings, they also have uh, in a, less percentage, have, they also have uh, anterior knee pain. And probably that is more caused by the muscle imbalance produced uh, by the surgery for the pain, for the lesion, and uh, uh, that, the, of course, for a uh, uh, overload of the uh, uh, patellofemoral joint. Uh, it's, uh, it's, not an, uh, it's not a sort of, uh, issue. I mean, I don't have the final answer and final answer and, and how to avoid the anterior knee pain. And it's very frequently, especially uh, when you use the bone patellar tendon bone uh, graft. Okay. Uh, Dr. Figueroa, how about? Yeah, please, please. Dr. Sorry, Figueroa. no, I'm yeah. just wondering, uh, how about for the hamstring grafts that you take? How many uh, patients, what percentage have pain from the donor site? Pain in the donor side? For well, the hamstring. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, hamstring is, is, is probably is our 90% of patients are reconstructed uh, with uh, hamstring tendon. And uh, we have uh, two special problems with the hamstring tendon. Uh, one of them is, uh, is the uh, um, hamstring pain in uh, uh, there is a kind of uh, hematoma that persists for uh, three or more weeks in the post-op in many patients. Uh, we have done some uh, ultrasound echotomography follow-up of uh, patients uh, for uh, three and more weeks. And uh, in an average of the third week, they have uh, pain, they have hematoma, uh, um, and they have a kind of a sprain uh, of the muscle in the in the in the zone in the area of the of the graph uh, 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 
uh, harvest. Uh, so it's very frequent. Uh, I would say that uh, uh, almost 70% of our patients complain about the uh, pain in the harvest zone uh, in hamstring tendon uh, for at least three or four weeks. And if you do an ultrasound in those patients, you will find an hematoma there and a sprain of the muscle there. And the other uh, problem that we have with the hamstring uh, graft is the uh, lesion of the infrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve. Yeah, they use, uh, uh, we, we perform a study and we found 77% of the, our patients had a lesion of the infrapatellar uh, branch of the saphenous nerve. It's a lot. Uh, and uh, and uh, it's not easy to avoid also, yeah. Okay, so I have one last question for both uh, Dr. Figueroa and Dr. Tan. Do you have experience with the stripper for the quadriceps tendon? So can you tell us uh, regarding the, I mean, whether it is useful, does it reduce the uh, size of the incision? Does it uh, reduce the morbidity for the patient and the quadriceps tendon stripper? Uh, well, as I said before, uh, I, I don't have many experience with the quadriceps tendons. And um, uh, there, are, there are some papers uh, that are appearing now uh, with a, a nice follow-up of this, uh, those patients. Uh, um, I have done some patients uh, for in, in, uh, in revision surgery uh, who the, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't want to, to, to use an allograft for, uh, for the surgery. Uh, I have done some uh, quad uh, tendon, but only in revision. Uh, you have to perform a... Um, a big incision uh, uh, is a very strong uh, tendon. You can uh, 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 use it the double uh, sometimes. I, I don't have experience using a double bundle reconstruction, but you can do a double bundle reconstruction with that tendon also. And um, uh, But uh, there are some papers that, that are very prone to use uh, quad as a, in, in, even in a, primary reconstruction. I, I don't have uh, many experience with that tendon, so I can talk too much about that. Dr. Brian, do you have anything to say? Mm, sorry, man. I, that's, that's, not a, that's not a graft that I've used, so I can't, I can't comment on that. Okay. Actually, uh, we are getting lots of questions. There are around like 10 more questions there, but I think uh, uh, we are going to have it slowly. Uh, there are a lot of questions which are, are being covered in future in other talks also. So um, we assure the audience that all these will be covered in future. Uh, you have to say, Dr. Srinivas and Dr. Brian. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, ask uh, the, your indications for uh, um, lateral extraarticular tenodesis and which technique do you use? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good question. And uh, there is a fashion of uh, performing a, a, a lateral uh, uh, extra articular tenodesis. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, as, uh, uh, as I uh, participated in, in, some, uh, uh, in some symposiums, uh, uh, I have learned that uh, uh, many, uh, the surgeons uh, perform that techniques uh, even in uh, primary ACL reconstruction. Uh, but uh, my uh, indications for that techniques are, especially in those patients who are going to have a revision ACL surgery. Um, uh, I do, uh, every day I do more uh, lateral uh, uh, extraarticular tenodesis in those, pati in, in those patients especially in those patients also with uh, some laxity uh, degree. Uh, um, if, you, if you look at the, 
Uh, main indication probably uh, uh, to me is a patient with an ACL uh, revision, uh, not the primary ACL. Uh, I would say that uh, I, I would consider to do uh, extra-articular in a, uh, in a primary case only in those uh, uh, patients with uh, more laxity, yeah, um, and uh, more than 10 degrees of uh, hyperextension of the knee. Uh, for, for example, um, but especially uh, I have a consideration more in that uh, revision uh, patients, uh, ACL revision, uh, especially those uh, with uh, uh, an explosive uh, pivot shift. Um, and, um, and the technique, uh, uh, I have changed, uh, I have some experience with the anatomic uh, uh, extraarticular tenodesis reconstruction with the graft. Uh, uh, I, I, I use an allograft, uh, a semi-T uh, allograft, uh, but uh, in the last uh, uh, time, I've done more uh, uh, Lemer modified technique yeah, with the uh, good results. Uh, in that uh, technique, you can you can use a, 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 a bone tunnel in the femur, but also you can use only a uh, staple or two staple uh, in the femur without doing a, a tunnel, avoiding a confluence of tunnels uh, if you perform at the same time an ACL revision. Okay. Dr. Figuero, during my trip in uh, Latin America, I, that is when the first time I saw a lot of surgeons fix the tibial side in, with the knee in neutral not in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion. What is your preference and what do you suggest? Uh, well, the last, last, uh, we, we had a discussion uh, uh, in, uh, about what is the best uh, position for uh, ACL fixation, yeah? Uh, uh, ACL fixation, I, I, I usually do it uh, between uh, uh, full extension and 20 degrees of flexion. And uh, if you look at the biomechanical uh, result, there is no difference if you uh, do it in 20 to 30 degrees of flexion or close to uh, full extension, and there is no difference. And uh, regarding the extraarticular uh, tenodesis, uh, I perform in neutral rotation uh, and almost uh, full extension also. Okay. Um, there are a lot more questions. I will try to take only selected questions. Um, will you still go ahead with a hamstring graft harvest in a patient with grade one to two MCL injury? Yeah, that's a that's a that's a very good question. I mean, uh, uh, because uh, talk uh, about the association between uh, MCL and ACL lesions that. Uh, 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 otherwise, it's, that's very frequent uh, uh, to, to, to get that combination. I mean, uh, uh, probably 50% of our patient has uh, sustained an MCL lesion, a grade one, grade two. Uh, uh, to me, it's, it's not a matter of discussion. I, 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 I don't take in account, uh, uh, in, 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 I'm, not a, 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 I'm not afraid of taking a, the hamstring stand on in those patients with grade one, grade two uh, MCL, MCL lesion. The difference is the patient with has a grade three or a, a pole uh, a, a, a lesion. Uh, a, that patient, you have to consider that if you take the uh, hamstring uh, autograph, uh, you are increasing the possibility of uh, medial instability. So uh, that's a, this is a total different patient, but in a grade one, grade two, uh, I, I don't care about the uh, uh, the, the, the medial uh, lesion uh, in, in terms of uh, the graft. Okay, and uh, do you put your patients on full weight bearing after uh, uh, ACL reconstruction without meniscal repair? Uh, well, uh, the, the the question should be: uh, Do you use uh, uh, total weight uh, or partial weight bearing uh, in uh, ACL reconstruction. Uh, uh, well, in, in an ACL reconstruction, uh, just only the ACL reconstruction, I use uh, total 
uh, in uh, uh, very fast uh, uh, weight bearing. Uh, but uh, uh, finally, uh, the weight bearing depends on uh, uh, the other lesions that we perform. Uh, if I if I do uh, a meniscal root uh, repair, uh, probably uh, uh, I, I I prefer to uh, delay. Uh, the possibility of uh, a total weight bearing and uh, you use a partial weight bearing with two crutches for at least six weeks. Uh, but in, in a patient where I did um, a posterior meniscal uh, uh, repair with uh, a two or three uh, all inside techniques, uh, uh, sutures, uh, probably I, I use uh, uh, immediate uh, partial uh, weight bearing or more prone to uh, to accelerate the possibility of uh, total uh, weight bearing. It depends on of the associated lesion. Uh, if you perform a uh, uh, microfracture in a chondral lesion, of course you avoid the, the total uh, weight bearing. Uh, if I perform an uh, a, uh, osteochondral autograft transplantation at the same time. I use the total uh, weight bearing merely. I, I don't care uh, about the lesion, but. Uh... Okay. There are a couple of questions on uh, more explanation of outside to inside technique, but I assure you we have more talks on that in detail. So there is a question on uh, what is the size of the screw that you use on the tibia, the length of the screw? Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's also a, a, a very good question because uh, um, there was, a, there was a, a webinar last, uh, last week, uh, the first ISACOS webinar, and um, one of the, the conference uh, said that the, uh, um, you had to be care um, uh, of the size of the the, especially the length of the screw on the TV, especially in those small patients, um, small size patients. And um, um, we have a paper that we published in 2006 or 2007, 2007 in uh, arthroscopy uh, regarding the, the size of the, uh, and the length of the tunnel in our patients. And the question uh, was, is safe to use a 35 millimeter length uh, screw on the tibial tunnel? And the answer was yes. In our patients, uh, 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 we are um, allowed to use uh, a 30 or a 35 uh, length tunnel, but uh, it depends especially on the size uh, of the patient. Uh, so, um, in most of our, of our patients, I use a 35 length, and, uh, but uh, sometimes we have a small girl uh, and uh, I use a 30 or a 25 uh, length uh, uh, diameter. If I use a, a shorter screw, it's another indication for using a, a secondary fixation uh, as a stopper. Okay. Um... That's a, that's a person who is asking, do you add antibiotic to the graft? Yeah, I have a beautiful paper published uh, in, uh, recently in, uh, in um, well, I don't remember, but uh, just uh, a couple of weeks uh, before it was published, uh, I mean, OJSM, about pre-soaking the graft in vancomycin. vancomycin. Uh, <clears throat> you know, before uh, we performed that uh, pre-soaking of the uh, graft, uh, we had a rate of infection uh, um, 1.4, 1.45. That was our rate of infection in uh, related to hamstring graft because the hamstring graft, when you double, when you triple, when you quadruple, uh, has a lot of manipulation. And that uh, contaminate the graph, and, uh, and and that was demonstrated in the paper of Monjao and uh, and afterward in the paper of uh, Bertulio. And uh, when uh, we pre-soak, uh, 
uh, our rate of infection now is zero. Zero, no infection of the hamstring. Yeah. So please, please soak the uh, the graph and look at that paper. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe I can share the paper with the audience in the comments. I can get the details of the paper and share it to the people. Yes, of course. Okay. So I think it was a wonderful session. Uh, Dr. Brian and Dr. Sinha, do you have anything to say? Nope, that's all. No. Thank you very much. Yeah, Good. I think that's that was a, a yeah. that was a wonderful session and uh, with a lot of questions. And sorry, I am not able to cover all the questions, but I am assuring that it will be covered later. And I thank Dr. Figuera, Dr. Brian, and Dr. Dutters for taking your time to come over and make this possible. We have Dr. Ashok Shyam who has just joined us. He is in charge, uh, he is orthopedic surgeon from uh, India. He has helped us with projecting our program on Ortho TV. Hi, sir, Dr. Ashok. Hi. Hi, Dr. Tan, and hi, Dr. David. Hey, Dr. Ashok, how are you? Hi. So it was a very good program, and we were distributing all across India and surrounding. So we had around 1,100 viewers for this program. And uh, like Sashinder said, there were a lot of questions, but time was short to take all of them. He took most of them, and a lot of them were answered in the discussion. So it was an excellent webinar for us. Thank you very much for sparing your time, both of you. Thank you. All three. For, thank you very much for making it happen, Dr. Figuera and Dr. Brian. Now I'm going offline.